We are on the hill in Bowling Green, Kentucky for Tuesday night college basketball between a pair of 2-0 teams. The Western Kentucky Hilltoppers take on the Greyhounds of Indianapolis, the first ever meeting between the two schools separated by about three and a half hours along I-65. Hi, everybody. Welcome inside Diddle Arena along with Jay Walton. Jeff M. here with you, and Lexi Schweiner joins us from the sidelines in a moment. Jay, interesting matchup. Both of these teams needed a fit for this night on the schedule before Thanksgiving. We know they can both shoot it from downtown. Three-point shot is a huge weapon for both these guys. Like you said, an interesting matchup. When you're a mid-major who's had as much success as West Kentucky, it's very difficult to find a home-and-home -home opponent. For Indy, a great chance to go on the road against a quality Division I team and get yourself prepared for the, your Division II season where they have some very high expectations. Our featured players are in the backcourt. We saw redshirt sophomore Jesse Bingham there for Indy, and Luke Frampton has been on fire. Lights out to start the season. Uh, experienced guy. He's played a lot of minutes for this ball club. Uh, made a lot of three-point shots in his career. Expect to see him. Uh, get hot early in this game. Indy really has to locate him, especially in transition, because he does not need much room to get that shot off. Our keys to the game, starting with Indy, they want to get off to a good start in this environment. Yeah, when you go on the road, especially against a team uh, like West Kentucky in this environment, you, you want to weather the storm early in the game. You want to get quality shots every time down the floor, take care of the basketball, settle into a rhythm offensively. And what do the new faces mean for Western Kentucky in this game? Well, I, you know, they got to find the flow. They have incredible depth and talent, a lot of new faces. And sometimes uh, when you throw all those talented bodies in the mix, chemistry is the key. And sometimes it takes teams a little bit a while to find that early in the season. And so defining roles, uh, sharing the basketball, deciding who gets the big shots, that's the key for this West Kentucky team early in the year. Lexi Schweiner, welcome to the crew. How are you tonight? Hey guys, so excited to be joining you guys tonight as these teams play each other for the first time in history, albeit sharing some sideline tidbits with you throughout the game, but for now I'll send it back to you guys. All right, we're ready to go. Our officials are Antonio Petty, Craig Murley, and Brooks Wells. The Hilltoppers home in white with the 7-5 Jamarian Sharp to jump center, and the Greyhounds in road maroon, Kendrick Choa jumping center, and Western Kentucky has it first to get us underway tonight here in Bowling Green. U-Indy is typically a man-to-man -man defensive team. Toppers go right inside to Sharp. The tallest player again this year in all of college ball and his first shot off the mark. Rebounded, and here come the Greyhounds. Rick Stansbury for Western Kentucky feels like this group he's got this year has the chance to be an elite defensive team. We'll see how they lock down tonight on U Indy. Yeah, it was interesting. He talked a little bit about that before the game. He didn't speak much about this team offensively. He kind of got the feeling that as many weapons as he has that the offense will take care of itself, but he wants them to develop a defensive mindset and let that be their identity. A couple of perimeter shots off the mark for the Greyhounds. Now Davion McKnight working for Western Kentucky. McKnight stuck on the baseline, gets it out to Emmanuel Acott, one of the new faces for the toppers, the transfer from Boise State. Some new additions to a veteran Western Kentucky team with Sharp and McKnight and Frampton coming back. Luke Frampton has barely missed so far this year, part of a big night the other night for the toppers. That one is too strong, and we remain scoreless, and Acott will bring it right back for Western Kentucky. He is 6'8" but he was the point guard at Boise State for a lot of his time on the floor there. And now we've got our first whistle of the night. Yeah, Acott, just a really tough matchup at 6'8", with ball handling skills. Like you mentioned, he played the point guard at Boise State, and it's a, just a tough matchup defensively for Indy tonight. And Acott with the ball right now. He's in his final year of eligibility. And there is our first basket of the night, Davion McKnight, coming off 16 points the other night against Kentucky State when Western Kentucky put up 127 as a team. McKnight was certainly part of the fun. We talked about defining roles a little bit. Um, McKnight will certainly, you know, last year look to score quite a bit. This year, they don't need him to do that as much. He, he needs to be more of a distributor, especially early in the game, find the guys with a hot hand and take care of the ball, be a, more of a, a playmaker instead of a scorer. Two minutes in, 
And 3-0 Western Kentucky. Here's Jesse Bingham on the take and a blocking foul. Bingham and Jacoby Robinson are quite a tandem for this Indy team. They're off to a 2-0 start. They're picked to win their Division II Great Lakes Valley Conference. Bingham's had 14 points in each of their first two games. You see the foul by Hamilton. Another offensive rebound here for the Greyhounds. Fresh 20. Yeah, Bingham is a really strong physical guard. Obviously can shoot the three-point shot, but loves to put on the floor, get himself inside the paint. And a corner three is good, and we are tied early on. That was David Ejaw with the triple. And inside an answer by McKnight. Two times already we've seen McKnight kind of go to an ISO in the post, try to back his man down a little bit. And uh, that time was able to go to the glass for the bucket. There is a lot more depth this year on this Western Kentucky team. There were times last year where they were only going to the bench for maybe one or two guys. And Rick Stansbury this year feels like they are truly 10 deep. They've got a full and really good second unit and a lot of depth on this ball club this year. I think Coach Stansberry would tell you that last season there were times that he couldn't really play the way he wanted to play, especially defensively because of foul trouble or fatigue and had to play a lot more zone than he wanted to. This year he, he doesn't, he's got the luxury of a lot of bodies over there on the bench that are ready to come in and play. Acott hits the three. Everything from beyond the arc so far, and it's an 8-3 advantage for Western Kentucky. Acott had 17 the other day against Kentucky State. Yeah, we've got a foul coming up, and Rick Stansbury talking about it with Brooks Wells. We saw Jamarian Sharp there showing his ability to extend defensively. I mean, obviously at seven foot five, he's a great rim protector and. Uh, a shot blocking presence in the paint, but that time able to get out, extend, and play the three point shot. Foul was picked up by Acod. Here in Etherington in the lineup right now for Indy. And a takeaway. McKnight trying to create numbers. Acod passed it up. It leads to McKnight, wide open on the other side, and it's off the mark. And then inside, contact, and Hamilton getting tied up with his defender. And Jarius Hamilton picks up his second foul already. Yeah, two two three-point attempts already early in the game for Davion McKnight. Not known as a three-point shooter, more of a mid-range guy. Uh, obviously, he's been working on that range in the offseason and certainly uh, a part of his game, but I, I like to see him look for that mid-range spot, get to his spots, pull up, jump shot, really, really good. He had only attempted one three combined in their first two games. And that, a whistle away from the ball. And that'll take us to our first timeout of the night, 15.51 to go here in the early going as the foul is picked up by Luke Frampton. And the toppers are out to an 8-3 lead early on the Greyhounds of U-Indy. Four minutes in here in Bowling Green, Western Kentucky on top of the University of Indianapolis, 8-3. As you see the Greyhounds huddling up, their head coach is Paul Corsero in his third year, Indianapolis native. And a U of Indy alum, in fact, played basketball and football there and was an assistant for the Greyhounds for six years before going to Purdue Fort Wayne for two years as an assistant and then coming back to the Circle City. And in his third year, Paul Corsero. The Greyhounds off to a 2-0 start. They won on Friday against Ohio Dominican, 81-39. He felt like they played a full 40. And then on Sunday, they beat Lake Erie 78-65 with a big second-half performance. They've shot it well from beyond the arc in both games. And there in the seventh season on the hill is Rick Stansberry for Western Kentucky, the Bluegrass State native. Five-point lead for the Hilltoppers. Acott thought about the three again and a little bit of contact and a foul picked up there by David Ejaw, his first, the Fort Wayne, Indiana native. 
This is an exhibition game for you, Indy. They are a Division II school, and they are allowed up to three Division I exhibition games. They didn't have any, and they reached, around, reached out trying to find somebody they could play. Rick Stansbury wanted a game tonight for his team before they go to the Cayman Islands for Thanksgiving. And they'll take on Akron later this week, a tough test. So the Hilltoppers didn't want a gap in their schedule as Sharp gets on the board with his first points of the night. So it, it lined up perfectly, only about three and a half hours away. They'd never played each other. Both coaches said they didn't know a ton about their opponent coming into tonight, but they're glad to get a game in this stretch of the week before a big week next week for both teams. And there's a basket inside by Bruno Williams. Heads up back door play right there. Hamilton overplay in the passing lane and Jamari and Sharp not near the rim that time to protect. Acott out to McKnight, shot clock at 10. McKnight lost it and a turnover by the Hilltoppers. Numbers for the Greyhounds. Featherington saves it and the three off the mark by Williams. Another offensive rebound. That's the fifth of the night already for Indy. And they can't get the three. It leads to a run out for Hamilton. A dunk by Hamilton with the assist from McKnight. As well as Indy shot the ball in their first two games, really finding a hard time getting good looks tonight from, uh, from outside. They shoot a lot of threes. They are one of eight so far from beyond the arc. And they've been shooting very well coming into tonight. Now, again, they're facing a, a different type of opponent defensively than what they're used to. But they are struggling from downtown so far. First game, they were 10 of 26. And then in their second game, they were 13 of 22. So they fire it a lot from beyond the arc. They caught offensive foul. Maybe a little bit of a wrap around with the arm there. And he's going to pick up. His second foul. If they will look to post Acott quite a bit, his size advantage against smaller guards. That time right there, just a little bit too aggressive with the hook. Well, we talked about the Western Kentucky depth, and they are making a line change here. Tyrone Marshall in the game. Christian Lander in the game, the Indiana transfer. Jordan Rawls, a transfer from Georgia State in his return to Western Kentucky. He checks in. Dante Allen in the game, as well as Falu Jun, a 6'11 redshirt sophomore. So a new five for the Hilltoppers and a basket for U Indy. And that one goes to Jacoby Robinson. He's on the board for the night, had 20 points and 10 rebounds in their game on Sunday against Lake Erie. Rawls off the mark, one and done. Five point game as we Get under 13 minutes here inside Diddle Arena. Robinson. And that one is good. A three on the way. Sean Craig is on the board. What I like about that three-point look, it was an inside out. You got the dribble penetration into the paint to draw the defense and the kick out for the three. That's a much better look than just swinging around the perimeter until you find the shooter. Now the Hilltoppers with it. Falu Jun, native of Senegal. Jump shot off the mark. Here's Craig again, guarded by Rawls. Down to a two-point game. It's been a two-minute scoring drought for Western Kentucky. Robinson into Kendrick Choa. And the junior center with a nice hook, but it's too strong. And Jamari and Sharp off the floor. Expect to see Indy to force the issue inside a little bit. Feel like they can attack the rim without that shot blocker presence inside. Dante oh. Allen off the mark from beyond the arc. And we've got a timeout on the floor. A run for the Greyhounds. They've cut it to a two-point game. 12-10 Western Kentucky at the 11-44 mark of the first half. A two-point advantage for the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky on top of Division II University of Indianapolis. 
Jeff M., Jay Walton, Lexi Schweinert back with you inside Diddle Arena. We know, Jay, that U Indy wants to lean on the three. It was a cold start. They're starting to find their stroke now. Well, what I like about this last attempt, it was at an inside-out three. You get the dribble penetration, allows your shooters to get in a much better rhythm instead of, you know, swing the ball around the horn until you find an open shooter. Get the ball in the paint, make that defense collapse, kick out to the open guy, what we saw in that last possession. Two-and-a-half-minute scoring drought right now for Western Kentucky. Both teams off to a 2-0 start on the young season. First-ever meeting between the two clubs. We've seen this second unit come off the bench first couple games for West Kentucky and extend the defense a little bit. That time we had a little token pressure. I, I would like to see uh, these guys go to a little bit more of a full court press, try to create some turnovers. Bingham with a kick out in the corner to Ben Nickerson. Shot clock at seven. Bingham on the take. And that's his first points of the night. He's one of their leaders. He's had 14 in each of the first two games. Indianapolis native Jesse Bingham. Hill Topper stay with this second unit. And the three no good by Lander. Hill Topper's two of six from beyond the arc to start it. Choa inside. And it got knocked away. Two on one at the other end. Marshall. And a beautiful feed. It's laid in by Dante Allen. That's about as good as you can ask as far as getting a defensive rebound, run the floor, and getting an easy basket in transition. Love, love that defensive effort by West Kentucky. Allen, a Kentucky transfer, and at the high school level, a former Kentucky Mr. Basketball. And Sean Craig with another three. He's had 11 points in each of their first two games, and he's got six early tonight. And their best scorer off the bench. Double figures in both of their first two games. And the Greyhounds with their first lead of the night. That went off the mark by Marshall. He wanted a foul after there was some contact inside. Lost it on the way up. Set play here by Indy. Let's see if they can get Bingham on a post up. Bingham gets around Marshall. Off the mark, though, and Allen's got the rebound. Again, the Hilltoppers try to push. Allen left all alone, and that one is good. Not many teams can say they've got a transfer from Kentucky and a transfer from Indiana coming off the bench. Uh, just talking about the depth of yep. this West Kentucky roster. There, Allen showing his range. He is a special, special shooter what he brings to the table offensively. He was second on the team at Kentucky as a redshirt freshman. They made threes second on their team. And a traveling violation, or did he step out? Jarvis Walker turns it over. So Walker on the turnover. And a two-point advantage for the Hilltoppers as we approach nine minutes. Jordan Rawls short on the jump shot. Then Nickerson back the other way for the Greyhounds. Walker fakes once, shoots the second one, and that one is off the mark. Another offensive rebound. Indy's been busy on the board so far tonight. And the block goes out of bounds to keep it with the Greyhounds. They're winning the battle inside on the board so far. Good hands by Marshall. And on the drive, he got it to go off the glass. West Kentucky's coaching staff loves the energy that Tyrone Marshall brings in his second unit. And we talked about the energy that he expects out of that group defensively. And it's a great example. Active hands, gets a deflection, aggressive finish. And Sean Craig has hit his third three. The Hilltoppers are not getting out on him on the perimeter. He was wide open. And Rick Stansbury's kind of looking at Tyrone Marshall like, yeah, you got to get out there on him. Back to a one-point game. Some valuable minutes here for this second unit in the middle of the first half. Allen wants another one. 
And that one's off the mark. Ben Nickerson, Indiana native. We're gonna shake Christian Lander. Now the Hilltoppers bringing more pressure out on the perimeter. Bingham leaves one back, and that three is good. David Ejaw has six. I think that was supposed to be a switch on the ball screen up top. Miscommunication, screener is wide open at the top, nobody rotated. And the Greyhounds with five threes in the game now. Lander trying to answer, and does. Great spacing there by Lander after the screen. These two teams have combined to go nine for 23 so far from beyond the arc. Nobody is shy with the stroke tonight. Nickerson, that one's short, and the glass is owned by Falu Jun. And now Jun for three. Got it. It is heating up from beyond the arc here inside Diddle Arena. Both teams letting it fly. And now the Hilltoppers on a 6-0 run have taken a four-point lead. Twenty five twenty one Western Kentucky on top of the University of Indianapolis and both teams are finding their three point stroke here in the first half as we send it over to Lexi. Yeah, guys, and I want to talk a little bit about last game that WKU had against Kentucky State. They broke a number of records, including the most three-pointers in both Diddle Arena and the program overall with 19 three-pointers. Pointers. They also tied the NCAA record for the most amount of different players to shoot a three-pointer on one team. That's nine different players. The only other schools to do it were Dartmouth in 1993, Florida in 2006, and 2018, and Michigan in 2008. Back to you guys. Yeah, they were 19 of 29 from beyond the arc on Saturday against Kentucky State, and nine different guys hitting a three. Six different players were in double figures. Everybody just about had a good night when you're putting up 127. Yeah, everybody got in on that party. Uh, a lot of fun playing that way. Back in action, Greyhounds ball. Were you ever on a team that put up 127 points in a game, do you think? Oh, yeah, a couple times early in the year. Get some uh, college maybe, level? Yeah, yeah. maybe some, a couple of non Division I opponents yeah. early in the year. Air ball and maybe partially blocked, and Jacoby Robinson is claiming that that's what happened. He said it should have been out on the Hilltoppers. Not going to win the argument. Western Kentucky ball. Starters back on the floor for West Kentucky, and here comes a set play. Frampton with a beautiful feed inside to Hamilton. Hamilton. Marion Sharp should get the assist for the back screen he set there for Hamilton, wide open underneath. Great job by Jamarian. We talked about the Western Kentucky depth and how much more of it they have this year. There's a three, David Ejaw having a good first half. He's got nine. And the toppers back to Sharp on the alley-oop. Just didn't quite have the timing down. But Jay, what did you think of that second unit we saw? They got quite a bit of minutes together. They did, and I think maybe that was by design. I think Coach Stansberry, even though, you know, they weren't in a great rhythm offensively, I think, you know, he's expecting a lot out of those guys and for his team to be as good as he wants them to be, that, that, that second unit's going to have to get into a rhythm. And so I think he let him play through a little bit of that rustiness and sloppiness early. Aaron Etherington with another three for Indy, the Toledo transfer, and Indiana native, and seven threes in the game for the Greyhounds, tied at 27. And it stays that way after McKnight misses. Josiah Tynes taking Frampton. Good ball movement, open three. That one off the mark. It was Bruno Williams trying to bury it. Greyhounds, I feel like, have gotten a lot of the looks you've sensed that they want to get. They're getting a lot of open threes. Yeah, their looks are getting a little bit better here in the last few minutes. A lot more inside out, three point opportunities, a little bit better ball movement a little bit less, four shots. 
37 all. Nearing the four minute mark. Williams trying to get around Sharp, not easy to do on a 7-5 guy, and the fadeaway corner three is no good by Ejaw. McKnight, coast to coast, extra step. Rebound by Hamilton, and he can't quite save it to Sharp. And that's the third turnover by Western Kentucky, and it sends us to a timeout. A 6-0 run now for the Greyhounds. They have answered the 6-0 run of the Hilltoppers. And under four to go first half. We're even at 27. Tonight, the University of Indianapolis is looking for their third win against a Division I team. They only have two in the past four years, one against Valparaiso in 2018 and the second against Loyola Chicago in 2019. This is a very close game, tied 27 to 27 right now, something that a lot of people weren't expecting. I'll send it back to you guys. Yeah, and both of those D1 wins for Indy were on the road in 18 and 19. Again, they are picked to be at the top of their conference this year, the Great Lakes Valley Conference. They return the second team all-conference guard in Jesse Bingham. He was also on the all-defensive team a year ago. Their big man, Kendrick Choa, is back and has one of the great field goal percentages in their program history so far in his career. They got to their conference championship game a year ago. So Paul Corsero has built a nice program these last few years at UND. That three off the mark by Aaron Etherington. And another offensive rebound. The Greyhounds have been busy on that front here in the first half. You can think of seven foot five Jamarian Sharp as a shot blocker in the paint, but when you got a guy like that that can also switch a ball screen and keep a guard out in front and contest, that, that is very impressive footwork for a guy his size. And Sharp with the block, the nation's blocks leader a year ago. And it's off the mark here by Hamilton trying to answer. And that was. The second block of the night by Jamari and Sharp. Recently named to the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar Award watch list for the nation's top center this year. That's a great spot for Hamilton. I, I really like him in the mid post. Um, you know, coming out of that break, needing the bucket, needing a quality shot. They got the ball to Hamilton right there on his spot. And he was very aggressive. Didn't get the ball to go in off the glass, but Draw the foul, get himself to the foul line. I like that call by Coach Stansberry. And he hits them both. Hamilton three of four at the stripe the other day. Five of six there on the year now. Three minutes to go in the first half, and the Hilltoppers by two. And a traveling violation against Jacoby Robinson. Jacoby Robinson quiet so far. Indy really needs to get him going offensively to be able to make a run here in this game. He's a guy who transferred from McKendree University a couple of years ago. That's a, a, a fellow Great Lakes Valley Conference team for UND. Acott, nice shot over Bingham for two. Well, I like the patience that West Kentucky showed on that offensive possession. Got the ball to Hamilton again in the mid post, this time on the opposite block. He didn't force the issue. Got the ball moving, and then Acott with the nice mid-range floater in the paint. Eight different Hilltoppers have scored here in the first half. As we near the two-minute mark, a turnover by the Greyhounds. Frampton for three. Got it. His first basket of the night, he's had 21 and 20 in the first two games of the year, shooting lights out from beyond the arc and showing no different tonight after that one. His first attempt of the game from downtown. Yeah, just a great rhythm catch and shoot in transition. If you're Indy, you've got to know where he is in transition. McKnight on the reverse. And he's got seven, and a timeout taken by the Greyhounds. And a 7-0 run right now for the Hilltoppers. Finding the offense here late in the first half as they take a nine-point lead, their largest of the game. 
Yeah, that happened really quickly. A lot of those buckets coming off of defensive stops in transition. You saw McKnight right there attacking the glass. That's one of the things he really, really does well in transition. Just a very, very good finish using the rim to protect against the block. Jarius Hamilton recognized inside the arena after surpassing the 1,000 career points mark with that last basket. He's got six points tonight. Yeah, it came from a great high school program, the Cannon School in North Carolina. His uh, high school coach, Che Roth, spent some time as a Division I assistant for many years. And Coach, if you're watching tonight, you'll be proud. Your boy is, is doing well. Two years at Boston College, then went to Maryland, and then transferred to Western Kentucky and was immediately eligible last year. 29 out of 32 games a year ago. He played in for the Hilltoppers. Jarius Hamilton, fifth year, 6'8 guard back on this Western Kentucky team this year, and now a 1,000 point scorer. I like this call by Western Kentucky. The first time we've seen the half court trapping defense kind of throw Indy out of rhythm coming out of the timeout, you know, knowing they probably spent that timeout designing a man to man play to get a bucket and just messed their flow up a little bit offensively. Didn't get the turnover, but was able to, you know, not allow them to get a great look there either. Well, your key for the Greyhounds was to weather the storm. They've done that in this first half, but now they find themselves down nine. They commit a turnover. This feels like a big 76 seconds for them right now. Yeah, it really is, and a big stop for them coming up right now. You want to close this half strong. The momentum is clearly uh, in West Kentucky's favor. Let's see what we get right here as a set play for the Hilltoppers. A 9-0 run right now over the last two minutes for Western Kentucky. Acott gets it on the baseline. Size advantage on Bingham. 6-8 on 6-6. Good ball movement. Alley-oop, sharp the finish. By their best offensive possession of the night right there. The ball changed sides of the floor a couple different times. Touched five or six different hilltoppers. And, you know, it leads to a great shot opportunity there. Sharp with a huge finish. And McKnight blocks it away from Bingham, who was trying to answer. And a two-for-one opportunity here, an 11, about 10-second or so difference between game clock and shot clock. Marshall on the wing. Off the mark, Acott trying not to go over the back. Gets a, a chance, but Bingham corrals the rebound. Well, I was expecting to hold for the last shot. We really need a quality look right here going into halftime. Bingham blocked away by Sharp. The third block of the night by the 7-5 Sharp. And at the horn, it's no good by McKnight, but nonetheless, an 11-0 run by Western Kentucky to close out the first half. They hit four of their last five shots. And the Greyhounds, remember it was tied at 27 not that long ago. And in the last five minutes and 10 seconds of that first half, UND did not score. A great close into the intermission by the Hilltoppers. Yeah, got that first group back on the floor, and that's what you expect from your, your starters. To... Back with you inside Diddle Arena here in Bowling Green, Kentucky. At the break, the Hilltoppers lead U of Indy 38-27. to Jeff M., Jay Walton, Lexi Schweinert back with you. Great to have you alongside on this Tuesday night as Western Kentucky and Indianapolis meet for the first time in their program's histories. Both off to a 2-0 start. Exhibition game for Indy being a Division II team. Their conference schedule starts very soon, so this is a, a good test for them talent-wise before they get underway next week in the Great Lakes Valley Conference where they are picked to finish at the top. And, Jay, for Western Kentucky, they're going to play in the Cayman Islands starting on Monday against a good Akron team. LSU might be waiting after that. What is that like for a team, those, those holiday tournament trips, not only in who you play, but also just kind of coming together, being somewhere for several days as a group? Oh, it's huge for these teams. I mean, I was fortunate enough as a player to, to see a lot of the world because of the game of basketball, and these guys will get that experience and, you know, it helps in recruiting too. Hey, come play for West Kentucky. We'll take you down to the islands for Thanksgiving break. You know, trying to see if you and I can get on that trip. <laughs> um, but Maybe yeah. they'll get some beach time? <laughs> well, they probably will. They'll get down there a day or two early. And, 
you know, get their toes in the sand, I hope. But uh, for that coaching staff, they're more thinking about the quality opponents that they'll face in Akron, possibly LSU. It's a loaded field and, uh, you know, great preparation for your Conference USA schedule. Kansas State, Tulane, Nevada. Uh, Akron will be their opponent on Monday. That's the only known opponent at this point. And then the Hilltoppers are next here at home in a couple of weeks against South Carolina State. And that's on the 26th of November and headed toward then the new year and conference play after that. Hilltoppers 2-0. Last year, 19 wins, just shy of what would have been their fifth consecutive 20-win season. But they are picked very highly in Conference USA, number two in the preseason behind UAB. And the Hilltoppers with three preseason all-conference selections, the most of anybody in Conference USA with Emmanuel Laycott, Jamarian Sharp, and Davion McKnight. They've got an 11-point lead on those Greyhounds of UIndy after closing the first half on an 11-0 run. And it'll be starters on the floor for the Hilltoppers. And it looks to be the same way for the Greyhounds with Bingham, Tynes, Choa, Nickerson, and Robinson. And for the Hilltoppers, Hamilton, Acott, Frampton, McKnight, and Sharp. And off we go in the second half. For Indy, Bingham, Jacoby Robinson combined two for 11, only four points. If they're going to get back in this game, those two guys have got to find a flow offensively. They've been best friends for a long time. They were high school teammates at an Indianapolis powerhouse, Warren Central. That shot off the mark by Choa. They won a state championship together a few years ago before Robinson went to McKendree University initially and now reunited here with the Greyhounds. Hamilton and missing everything, but a good rebound underneath, and McKnight just couldn't quite get it back in. Frampton on the steal. Frampton with just three points in that first half after a monster start to the year and named today as Conference USA Player of the Week. Both teams with an early second half turnover here. And an offensive foul against the Greyhounds. Choa, before that kick out, had a full head of steam going into Luke Frampton. Coach Corsero is telling him, hey, just jump stop. Play off of two feet in the paint. That would have been a wide open three point shot. Instead, it's a turnover. It really takes the air out of you offensively. Hamilton wide open. Got it. Great shot fake by Acott and the defender closing out, out of control, but also the patience to find the open shooter in Hamilton on the trail. Is that a situation where the other defenders get caught watching because they thought Acott was going to shoot the three, and then they're late to get out on Hamilton? Yeah, I mean he's definitely a guy you gotta you gotta worry about. You gotta respect his his perimeter shooting. McKnight driving hard as he usually does, and he draws contact and has free throws coming. He's just such a rugged physical guard. You know, he's low to the ground. And even though he doesn't finish right there, but he puts pressure on the defense, creates a foul right there. Josiah Tynes picks up his second personal foul. And again, Indy did not score in the last five minutes of the first half, so they've gone about seven minutes now without a point as McKnight hits the first free throw. Kendrick Choa checks out, and they bring David Ejaw back in. Ejaw had a big first half along with Sean Craig. Leading the Greyhounds in scoring, each guy had nine. Hamilton, rather McKnight, has nine now for Western Kentucky. Yeah, two things really kept Indy in that game most of the first half. That's rebounding and their bench scoring. Nobody in double figures yet in the ball game. 43-27 Western Kentucky. Their largest lead of the night at 16. And another turnover. Their 11th of the game. Hilltoppers have only turned it over four times. We got a mismatch in here with Hamilton in the post. And Sharp was on the weak side, pointing at the hoop, thinking there was an alley oop chance coming. Acott step through, travel. The Euro step did not work in Bowling Green. 
Cross too many time zones <laughs> with that step right there. One too many. Got to try to the Cayman Islands next week. Uh, Maybe it might work down there. there. That's yeah. right. Southern Hemisphere <laughs> down there might, might get it done. College coaches now go with the casual wardrobe all the time. Those holiday tournaments were always great because you'd see the guys wearing an even more casual shirt. It's less of a difference now. Yeah. Nobody seems to wear the shirt and tie anymore. No, you, you get to COVID spend a lot less away. money on your uh, wardrobe if you're a <laughs> college basketball coach these days. Each uh, on the take and scores. you think that will ever come back? Or you think they're, they're going casual for good? I think so, yeah. Started during COVID when there were no fans in the stands and – it has stuck. NBA level two. Maybe it'll be like baseball. I mean, coaches have to dress <laughs> just like the players. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll get to that level one day, right? Sharp with a block. Echaw could not get it over the 7-5 Sharp. Hamilton lost it at the other end. It'll stay with the Hilltoppers. And Sharp with four blocks on the night. And he's got seven rebounds. That's at least a second three-point shot that he's blocked tonight. Just makes you change your shot. Even if he, if he doesn't block it, there's just no way to get it over him with your natural shooting motion. It, it just, there's no way it could not affect you. The other thing about that, too, is as you prepare to play West Kentucky, there is no way that you can simulate that in your practice. You can't put your scout team out there and have any kind of the same look that you're going to face when he's on the floor. You can hold up the yardstick, and I don't even know if that's going to be enough. Jarvis Walker to the basket, his first basket of the night. He's a guy they'd like to get going at 12 points and 9 points, respectively, in their first two games. Twelve-point game, McKnight. Fades away and scores. And he's the first player in this game to find double figures. And high ball screen with Sharp and McKnight at the top of the key is a huge part of West Kentucky's offense. Bingham got Sharp on him. Didn't realize Sharp fell down. He turned around, now fakes to get Sharp in the air. And Bingham draws the end one. Jesse Bingham trying to get the Greyhounds going. A quiet finish to the first half. And right now, down by 12 early in the second half. Western Kentucky on top of University of Indianapolis by 12. 45-33 with 15.54 to go in the second half. Good crowd on this Tuesday night inside Didlerini. See some of the fans with Lays on. They're ready to go to the Cayman Islands with these Hilltoppers for the Thanksgiving tournament next week. And Jamari and Sharp will be there blocking shots just like this. Yeah, yeah if, uh, if you're Indianapolis, you may want to think about a shot fake on the perimeter drive by. Bingham was able to do that on the next possession down there. Got the M1 going to the hoop. But yeah, Jamari and Sharp, again, we talked about his presence around the rim, but just great footwork and length and to be able to extend defensively and contest those three-point shots just makes it really, really difficult to find quality looks against this Hilltopper defense. You know, with this team having this kind of depth, too, I feel like he's not going to score a lot of points this year, but he's going to be one of the most impactful players in all of Division I college basketball despite a low points per game total. Well, he, he's just not – they won't ask that of him. You know, he's a he's – a, for lack of a better word, he's a garbage man. He's going to get – Easy buckets around the rim and putbacks and dunks. You know what? I tell you what he does. He's a great rim runner. When he sets that high ball screen. He gets to the rim and really draws a lot of attention defensively because he's such a big target down there. Like right now, here he goes. Look at it. Runs to the rim, uh, draws the defense in. Even though he didn't score that bucket, he, he's a big part of that play. Oh, and Hamilton is down and slow to get up back at the other end. It leads to an open three. Now Hamilton races back. He appears to be okay after a hard fall to the floor. Perhaps the right leg bugging him a little bit, but he's at least back on defense. Trying to pick up Josiah Tynes right now. Shot clock's at six. Williams lost it. Ejaw and a great defensive possession by the Hilltoppers. And it started as a four against five. 
Yeah, good job getting back in transition. And cover the basket, stop the ball, match up. That's what you want to teach your team in transition defense, and the Hilltoppers did a great job there. And we're able to almost force a shot clock violation there. Great hustle by Luke Frampton getting a deflection. And you can tell Hamilton is still not walking quite 100%, limping just a little bit, staying in, and his team up by 11. Underneath, and Walker got cut off and stepped on the baseline. 13th turnover by U of Indy. Set play coming here, maybe get Hamilton on a post up. McKnight gets it from Sharp. Frampton off the fake and the three. Talk about a guy that's in a great rhythm early in this basketball season. Just defender knows he has to come out hard on that. A great shot fake and a sidestep by Frampton. Very good patience there. He is two for two from beyond the arc tonight, and he is now 13 for 15 to start the year. 13 and 15 from beyond the arc for Luke Frampton. And tonight he's gone in long stretches between his two attempts. It's not like he's getting a boatload of attempts. Yeah, he's not a shot hunter, you know. He, he's a guy that uh, finds his spots, going to get in transition. You don't see a lot of set plays run for him to get three-point opportunities, but with as many weapons as West Kentucky can put on the floor, he's just a guy that finds a, the right spot and gets the space and lets the ball come to him. Shoah and Tynes come out for Indy. Etherington back in as well as Bruno Williams. They've got Jarvis Walker in the game with Jesse Bingham and David Ejaw. Sharp, a long two off the mark. Loose rebound, good hustle by McKnight, going to the floor and got pushed from behind. And that'll be a foul on Ejaw as he picks up his second. Third team foul against the Greyhounds. Good hustle by Davion McKnight. Yeah, 17-footer by Sharp. Not exactly what Rick Stansberry's drawing up uh, over there on the sideline. Sharp is 2 of 7 from the field tonight. Acock, that one off the mark. Another rebound by McKnight, and he'll get free throws out of it. Two great plays by McKnight on that possession. He had a great vision to find Acock across the court with an open three, and when your point guard is Mixing it up on the offensive glass like that, it's a huge weapon. Etherington picked up the foul. And McKnight, now three of three from the line of the game, and he's got a dozen points. And that leads all scorers now. Etherington out for the Greyhounds, and we're going to see a line change here again for the Hilltoppers. Frampton's going to come out. Sharp will come out. Hamilton a breather. McKnight's got one more free throw, and then it looks like they'll sub in Jordan Rawls if McKnight makes the free throw. But Lander, Jun, Allen in the ball game as well as Marshall. And McKnight will come out after hitting the second free throw. 13 for Davion McKnight. So for the second time tonight, we see a five-man substitution line here for the Hilltoppers. They're deeper this year. And they're bringing in this quintet as a group once again. Full court defense out of this crew. All new faces with the exception of Jordan Rawls, who, you know, the double transfer left, came back. But he spent some time in this program. And Coach Rick Stansbury talked a little bit about this second group. He's kind of put the onus on Rawls to get this group in a rhythm and lead them, not necessarily by scoring, but just, you know, finding the right tempo and getting the ball in the right spots for this group offensively. Now Rawls had two years at Western before going to Georgia State and now coming back. His dad Keith was a star at Austin P back in the day. That was in the 80s and Rick Stansbury was an assistant for the Govs back at that time. Connection to the Rawls family. Allen on the runner, it's short. Volleyballed around and grabbed by Walker. To the other end, Jarvis Walker, good hands by Rawls. And a steal by Bingham. He's met at the rim, and it got swatted away. The defense by Falu Jun. Back and forth we go. 
In the corner, Ejar. And now the feet came out from Walker. He's able to get it into the corner. Bingham again, off the mark and draws a foul this time. A lot going on there those last couple of possessions. Both My teams goodness. a little sloppy, not able to finish at the rim. And you like to see Bingham aggressively attacking the rim on the last two possessions. Didn't get the finish, but what a block by John. There may not have been a lot of execution on display in that last minute, but there was certainly plenty of athleticism. Bingham misses the free throw. He's only got five points tonight, averaging 14 per game coming in. And if you're Indy with this second group of West Kentucky players on the floor right now, you really, really got to eat into this lead here with 12 and a half minutes to go uh, to make this a game down the stretch. It's at 15 right now, nearing the 12 minute mark. Rawls with the mid range game. Man, he couldn't get the roll. Marshall almost tapped it in. It's out of bounds, and it was. Robinson standing on the baseline. So the Hilltoppers are going to keep possession here. See what they run on the inbound. Allen. It leads to Lander for three. Got it. Saw those guys working on that exact play a lot during their shoot around today. The elevator screen and Lander able to connect. There have been several times tonight where the Hilltoppers have run a set play, whether out of a timeout or out of a, a ball out of bounds, and they've executed very well in those situations. Yeah, you got to feel good about that as a coaching staff. Even if you don't make the shot, at least you know that your guys are dialed in, doing what they're supposed to do, getting a quality look. Allen underneath, off the mark. I mean, I would think those parts of practice, Jay, as a player are not always the most enjoyable part as other stretches of practice, but they end up becoming some of the most important parts if you're you're paying attention as a player. Yeah, repetition is key, especially if you're a guy like these guys on the floor right now, they're all you know looking for opportunity, they want to play more. You gotta be dialed in all the time. Take advantage of the opportunities when they come your way. Rawls with a basket, and now with that hoop, all 10 Hilltoppers who played have scored tonight. And out of bounds, a turnover. Jacoby Robinson is talking to his teammates like, guys, you've got to come help. He was trying to get it to Tynes, who had defense on him. There was nobody around, and it's another miscue by the Greyhounds. Western Kentucky has opened up a 20-point advantage. The Hilltoppers have their largest lead of the night, up by 20 on U of Indy, 55-35. Jeff M., Jay Walton back with you, and let's send it over to Lexi Schweiner. Yeah, Jeff, you mentioned that WKU is up by 20 points, their biggest lead so far this game. Something that head coach Rick Sansbury said last game was even when they're up this big, he still wants his players to learn and do better and keep learning and keep trying as much as they can. You can see that he's really into the game tonight. You can see he's getting upset over some of the mistakes they made. So even though they're up that big, they're still trying their best. And Jay, you were commenting during the break, the points off turnovers right now has become pretty staggering, especially in the last two minutes. 21 West Kentucky points off of turnovers. And if you're Indy, you have got to, for the rest of this game, get a quality look each time down the floor because a lot of these turnovers are leading to buckets in transition. You, there is no defense for that when it's two on one, three on two, and that's really what Western has been able to, how, how they've been able to extend this lead the last several minutes, most of the time with this second group on the floor. Indy has not had a field goal in the last five minutes. They've turned it over five times in that stretch. And they've got the possession now down by 20 with 10 and a half to go here in Kentucky. Jacoby Robinson with just two points tonight. Jesse Bingham's got six, and that's the tandem that typically makes the Greyhounds go. And both those guys have combined six turnovers as well, so they certainly need to play better down the stretch to have a chance to crawl back in it. We talked about it in the first half. There were some open looks for the Greyhounds. Their offense looked pretty comfortable, getting a lot of shots in rhythm. 
It has really changed from the late second half to now with the defensive work of the Hilltoppers clamping down on that perimeter threat that the Greyhounds pose. I think a lot of it may be fatigue a little bit, setting in, kind of frustration turnovers for Indy. Well, and the Hilltoppers at this point in a game last year might have had fatigue of their own when they were lacking the depth. They don't have that problem this year. Yeah, I think, you know, you're going to see a lot less zone defense from West Kentucky this year. Like I think last year they had to play zone, didn't necessarily want to, but felt like they had to just because of fatigue and foul trouble at certain times. Um, but certainly if they play zone this year, it'll be more of an extended zone to force tempo, create turnovers. Jacoby Robinson a moment ago got charged with a technical foul. The Greyhounds possession results in a three by Sean Craig. And Robinson now actually was on uh, it was on Lander, not on Robinson. They initially charged it to Robinson, but Christian Lander of Western Kentucky was charged with a technical foul after he had committed the foul initially that led to the stoppage. Inside, a basket for Choa, and he's got his first points of the night. Yeah, with uh, Sharp on the floor, that's not necessarily a play you want to see for Indy, but with him on the bench, uh, John, not that he's not a factor defensively, but certainly not the shot blocking presence that Sharp would be. Kind of take it right out in there. Great, strong physical move by Choa. Lander airballed the three. Marshall unable to save it. 15 point game. Nine threes tonight for Western Kentucky, eight for the Greyhounds. Robinson takes the screen from Choa. Long two, off the mark, rebounded by Marshall. And Marshall back at the other end, off the mark. That's corralled by Robinson. Five rebounds tonight for Jacoby Robinson. Craig gets his own miss, tries again, off the mark. Bodies on the floor, and Hilltoppers ball. David Ejaw coming back in, as well as Jesse Bingham. Choa leaves, so does Aaron Etherington. And they'll wipe up the floor. This five-man second unit stays in here for the Hilltoppers. Their largest lead of the night, 20, and right now sitting at 15. Yeah, having this little 15-point cushion, again, gives Coach Stansberry the luxury of playing this group a little bit longer, kind of getting a little bit better rhythm offensively. Not, not the kind of possession you want right there, you know. Not, not much ball movement, a contested long-distance shot, you know. Um, no, Allen, it's a great look for him, great shot for him, but I think you want that to come after more sharing of the basketball. Yeah. Well, you think of the starting five for the Hilltoppers, most of that group has played together with the except, exception of Acott. You look at the second five, you're talking about a lot of transfers in there. Lander from Indiana, Allen from Kentucky, Rawls making his return from Georgia State. So that group of five, maybe unfamiliar with each other, still kind of feeling it out as a group with the offensive rhythm. Aggressive take by Ejob, and it got blocked away by Sharp. And there's a three in the corner for Robinson. Yeah, been a tough night for him tonight, and it's good to see that shot go down from the corner. Two of seven from the field, one of four from downtown for Jacoby Robinson. Sharp's got five blocks. Acott, step through, nice move by Emmanuel Acott. He's up to seven points. All the starters have played about 20 minutes. That second unit has played about a dozen minutes tonight. You wonder as the season progresses, will, will he stay with the five at a time I was substitution? Just thinking that. Or do you have certain guys that kind of 
you know. Mix and match? Or, yeah, we wonder how that'll progress. Yeah. Next game for Western is Monday in the Cayman Islands against Akron, a team that made the NCAA tournament last year and gave UCLA all it could handle in the opening round. Hamilton with the jumper. Jerry Hamilton. And we've got a whistle and a timeout on the floor. 6.51 to go here in Bowling Green. And the Hilltoppers trying to pull away from the Greyhounds. A 16-point advantage for Rick Stansberry. A 16-point difference with under seven to go here at Western Kentucky. The Hilltoppers on top of the Greyhounds, 59-43. Jeff M.J. Walton back with you. We talked about the upcoming Cayman Islands trip for the Hilltoppers. They'll take on Akron on Monday. And for more about that matchup, let's send it over to Lexi. Hey, Jeff. Yeah, you might notice a lot of fans and cheerleaders and dancers tonight are wearing their lays in honor of the team going to the Cayman Islands this upcoming week. They are one of eight teams going to this tournament. Other teams include LSU, Nevada, Rhode Island. They're guaranteed to play three games in three days. They were supposed to play in 2020, but that tournament was canceled, so they're finally getting to go. I'm a little bit jealous. The weather is a lot better than here in Kentucky. That is for sure. There is no refuting that as we are back in action and a basket for Jesse Bingham. Jay, we talked about it, what it presents, what it's like, the travel, getting together as a group. But three games in three days is another unique component that those kind of tournaments can offer a ball club. Well, I think what they'll tell those guys is, listen, this is preseason, but if you want to be good in February and March, you're going to have to play two or three games in three in consecutive nights. If you want to win your conference tournament, you know, you, you got to be really good back to back. If you want to advance to the NCAA tournament, you got to win two games in a weekend. So treat this preseason like you would a postseason tournament and have that opportunity to show that you can get better, uh, that you can win on back to back nights like that. Davion McKnight with game high honors right now at 16 points. There's Choa inside. Four for the Maryland native, Kendrick Choa, although he went to high school in the Chicago area. U of Indy has about a, a six hour or so radius when they recruit typically. Paul Corsero building this good Greyhounds program the last few years where he'd been an assistant before that. Coming back from Purdue Fort Wayne to take the head coaching job at Indy. Yeah, I tell you what they've done a great job is keeping those Indianapolis guys at home. A lot yeah. of Indianapolis kids on that roster and uh, when you're building a program, you certainly want to start in your own backyard and be good there. Bingham starting to make up for lost time. He's up to 11 in the game now. Shown a little bit of everything tonight. He's gone to the basket hard. He's made threes. He's shown a couple mid-range shots on his last two or three possessions. Shows you why he's a all-league player in their Great Lakes Valley Conference. And, and they're within 12 now with that last three by Jesse Bingham. The Greyhounds are not going away. 62 to 50 Hilltoppers with under five to go here on the hill. A 12 point lead for the Hilltoppers over the Greyhounds of University of Indianapolis. And there's you, Indy in the huddle. Paul Corsero, their head coach. They've hung around here, Jay, in this second half. It's not been a great half of shooting for the Hilltoppers. And the Greyhounds, tough team, good Division II program, not going away. Yeah, you can kind of see their body language. They want to make one more run at this thing. See if we can't get it under single digits and try to close late. And there you see Bingham, a tough start for him. Struggled the first half. Last several possessions has really come alive, and he's feeling a little bit. And uh, you can tell why he's going to be an all-league player for Indy in their conference. And, um, yeah, needs to get some touches down the stretch because he's certainly heated up here lately. That three, his only triple of the night. He's got 11 points, and so he's now in double figures for the third game in a row for the Greyhounds, and he got to 10-plus points 24 times out of 30 games a year ago. So he is definitely their guy. The Indianapolis native has the ball right now. Gives it up to Jarvis Walker. Shot clock at 15. Shoah going up against Sharp. Tough matchup. Shot clock down to six. Bingham off the mark, and it's into the hands of Jamarian Sharp, his ninth rebound of the game. 
Did a great job of stealing and posting deep by Choa. You know, you got to admire he wants the ball, very physical down there, but just tough to finish over Jamarian Sharp. I don't guess there'll be many seven foot five guys in the Great Lakes Valley Conference. <laughs> and that one is on the way and in for Hamilton. You know, it's interesting you say that. Nobody at 7'5", but Indy does have a guy on their own team who's seven feet tall. We're not seeing him tonight. Julian Steinfeld, a native of Germany who prepped in North Carolina dealing with an injury. So we're not seeing him. Otherwise, there could have been two seven-footers on the floor in this game tonight, but Steinfeld not able to go. And Frampton going to the floor along with Jarvis Walker. It's a 14-point advantage for the Hilltoppers. Under four to go as we head down the stretch in Kentucky. The Hilltoppers have made four of their last five shots. They are holding the Greyhounds at bay with a 14-point advantage. Back inside Diddle Arena as we head down the stretch in this one. And let's send it back over to Lexi Schweiner. Hey, guys. Yeah, when the game is over, the action is not over. We're going to have a post-game interview with a member on the winning team after this about what clicked for them this game and what we can expect from them for next game. For now, I'll send it back to you guys. All right, Lexi, thank you. Looking forward to that. Hilltoppers coming back on the floor with their five starters. And a 14-point advantage as the Greyhounds trying to make one last run. These two teams had never met before tonight. They both had an open stretch this week in their schedule. Both teams wanted a game. It's an exhibition for Indianapolis. And again, Division II teams are allowed up to three of those, but Indy didn't have any. A team that normally likes to play at least one or two Division I teams had not found a match yet. Rick Stansbury and the Hilltoppers wanted to get, to get a game. They kind of found each other on a message board that coaches use when they're trying to match up with scheduling. And uh, it became a good fit. They're only three and a half hours away as that three is in and out for Sean Craig. And Mike Burris is the associate head coach for the Greyhounds. He handles a lot of their scheduling, and he's the guy that kind of made it happen on the Indy side. There's Mike Burris. He's also a guy who coached at the junior college level at only Central College in Illinois. Here's Luke Frampton with a three, and it's off the mark. Sharp the rebound, his 10th board of the night. Check it, 11 boards now for Jamarian. And Mike Burris knows what it's like to go up against Jamarian Sharp because when he was the head coach at only Central, Jamarian Sharp was at the junior college level himself at Logan College in Southern Illinois. And so Burris and his team went up against Sharp and his team before they both found their way to their current team. So a little history for the associate head coach, Mike Burris for the Greyhounds. And Jamarian Sharp has got four points 11 rebounds and another good handful of blocks tonight. And you talked about scheduling, how difficult it is for West Kentucky to find home and homes. I'm guessing there's not a lot of Division One teams who want to sign up to play Indy either. These guys are good. Yeah. There's Haycott with two. He's got nine tonight and a timeout taken by Paul Corsero with exactly two minutes to go in the game. And now it's a 16 point difference. And that might be enough for the Hilltoppers. We'll see what they do with their lineup here for these final two minutes. Yeah, it's been a good game. It, it has not felt like a 16-point game, and Western at one point led by as many as 20. Credit the Greyhounds. They're not going away. Again, they're picked to be at the top of their conference this year, the Great Lakes Valley Conference at the Division II level, and that's a conference that lost Lindenwood and Southern Indiana to the Division I level. With all the conference shuffling, those two teams have joined the Ohio Valley Conference, Belmont, Murray State, Austin P. leaving the OVC. Those openings got filled by two teams that this Indy team is used to playing in Lindenwood and Southern Indiana. So certain Division I conferences are not that far away from the talent level of this Division II Indy team. No, absolutely not. And there's a lot of guys on that indie roster that could certainly be playing at Division I level for sure. With two minutes to go here, down 16, you know, you, you just want to finish strong. Let's make a run here. Let's, let's don't act like the game is over. Let's close strong. Let's execute down the stretch and make them hold on to beat us. Hilltoppers are going to keep that starting five out there. 
with Sharp, Frampton, Hamilton, Acott, and McKnight. Fresh shot clock. And Bingham bringing it up. See what the Greyhounds do out of this stoppage here. Trying to go back door to Bingham. They can't get it to him. Robinson got it over Sharp, but missed everything. Was it blocked partially? It looks like it was. So credit Sharp with another block, and it'll stay with the shot clock at nine. Greyhounds ball. And a couple of subs are coming in now for the Hilltoppers. Noah Stansbury, head coach Rick's son, as well as Darius Miles, 6'10", junior center coming in. And the night is over for Sharp after block number eight. So 11 boards and eight blocks for Jamari and Sharp tonight. And McKnight also came out, and now it'll be Hilltoppers ball. Only four points for Sharp, but again, like we talked about, did he have an impact? You could say so, with eight blocks and 11 boards. Tallest player in college ball. I think at least half his blocks came away from the paint. You yeah. Know? Just marked on his footwork all night, but just very impressive the way he's able to stand defensively. Rick Stansbury felt like as Miles gets there on the board. Miles! Felt like Sharp has more confidence this year, a little bit more assertiveness in his game. He was still kind of feeling his way last year in a lot of ways. Combining that with the raw ability. And as you said, he's a pretty mobile guy too. You know, you can see a lot of seven footers around the game of basketball who are kind of just staying in the paint and they know their area, and but he can run the floor. Yeah, really run the floor and extend and you know, it, obviously not the most physical guy, but when you're seven foot five with those arms, man, you don't have to be. You can, you can still be a defensive presence. And what it does is it allows you to play man to man defense and really pressure, really get out and extend, go for some passes that you, you know, even if you even if you get beat on a back cut or if you give up a shot, you, you got a, a, a guy down there that can erase some mistakes defensively. Certainly, that's the way they'll want to play their man to man defense. Luke Frampton commits a foul to get some subs in. Tyler Olden is in. Elijah Huey is in. And Jalen Dorsey is in as well for the Hilltoppers to join Miles and Stansbury with 20 seconds to go. Robinson on the fader. In and out, no good. Tapped out, and nobody there. It'll be Western Kentucky ball. These are always fun moments. Who's going to get to take a shot here who normally does not get a lot of time on the floor, or will they just hold it? You know they want to shoot it individually in their heart, but they're not going to try to run up the score. Stansbury is going to let it run out. And Western Kentucky moves to 3-0 with a 68-50 victory over Indianapolis. The Division II Greyhounds suffer a loss for the first time, but it won't really go on their record. This was an exhibition for them. They get a good test on the road. Both teams with an open spot in their schedule. So they locked up. And like we said, Jay, this did not feel like an 18-point type difference for most of the way in this one. Now, if you're Indy, you got some great takeaways from this game. You went on the road to a team that's picked second in Conference USA. You beat them on the backboard. And on our night where we weren't our best offensively, uh, you know, a lot of positives come away from this game when you go back and you feel really, really prepared for the rest of your, your non-conference schedule and certainly Great Lakes Valley play. And what about the Hilltoppers? Wasn't a great second half by the numbers, but another night we're going into next week against the Cayman Island opponents in that tournament. They, they get a night together. It wasn't the prettiest night for them, but you didn't have a letdown. You didn't overlook this opponent. They came in and did what they had to do. Got the win in front of the home crowd. Got a little bit of a rhythm, and now get ready for a, a wonderful opportunity in the Cayman Islands and a great test against some of the teams that they'll match up with down there. Both teams ended up with 10 threes tonight. Western Kentucky took good care of the basketball. 18 turnovers by the Greyhounds. A ton of points off turnovers. 21 of them for the Hilltoppers, and they win it. 68 to 50 here tonight. Davion McKnight for the Hilltoppers ended up with 16 points, seven boards, three assists, and he is with Lexi Schweiner. 
Hey guys, yes, I'm with McKnight right now. You guys are now 3-0 and on the season. What does it mean to start off the season strong and undefeated? Uh, it's a big thing, you know. We got a big tournament coming up next week. You know, going into a 3-0, and playing our best ball right now. So it feels good. A couple of big wins. We've seen this year you guys are using a lot of more depth on the bench. This is your third season on the WKU team. What have you seen to use more of your roster? You know, um, it's wearing it's wearing and tearing on the other team. I know when we play team guys, platoon group like we've been doing, um, picking up full court is, is getting another team tired. So that's a good thing. And I know Coach Stansberry said even when you guys are up big in a game, he still wants you to work on your game perfect. Those things that you can work on. I've also heard that you guys are always in the gym shooting free throws, sh shooting three-pointers. Why are you guys constantly working to better yourself? We're just trying to get better as a team. You know, we're trying to we, we got one goal in mind, and that's the tournament. So we're going to do what we got to do to get to the tournament. I love that. Now another tournament right around the corner in the Cayman Islands. Three games in three days. How are you guys going to be preparing for that coming off of these great wins? You know, take a day at a time. You know, next game up is the most important. So we're just going to keep preparing for whoever we got next. Awesome. Thank you so much. Great game tonight. All right, I'll send it back to you guys. Thank you, Lexi. Thank you, Davion McKnight, for your time as the Hilltoppers with a balanced attack. Plenty of guys found the scoring column in this one tonight for Western Kentucky. They win it 68 to 58, uh, 68 to 50, closing the game with a 6-0 run, and the Greyhounds did not have a point in the last five minutes and change of that ball game. That'll do it for our broadcast tonight for Jay Walton, Lexi Schweinert, and all of our great crew. It's Jeff Hem signing off from Diddle Arena. Again, the final score: the Hilltoppers 68, the Greyhounds 50. Thank you so much for joining us. And good night from Kentucky. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN, and we wish you good night from the Bluegrass State.